Hello everybody. Well, we got another video here. Been a while, but I got screwed on eBay. I bought a Nye Viking MVBA uh, 3 kilowatt tuner and it was butchered. Somebody got into it and tried to rewire it, I don't know why. But they had it all wrong. Only half the main cap worked when you could turn it. The main air cap was all seized up for the most part. The roller inductor was messed up. You know, every like quarter of a turn it would bind. So, we have been doing some rebuilding. And, uh, well, I figured, what the hell, I'll do a re video here. Even though I'm already started, a lot of it's been done. So, all the tedious work has been done. But let me ex start here. Here we have a variable input capacitor bank, these four caps right here, were fixed values, which I, I guess they worked. Nye Viking used them, but in today's world of radio, you need more control than just four different values available. Yeah, you could combine two. They didn't recommend it, so, plus this was busted off, it was in there cockeyed, so that couldn't even work, which engaged the main part of the air cap, so you couldn't even turn the damn air cap on, which is that one there, so, I was like, screw this, these are all unique pieces for Nye Viking, you can't just order these. You know, a lot of stuff you can make, these are custom. They worked with a, a slide locker that went back and forth and would lock them. So I was like, screw this. It's low quality. I'll give you an example here. As you can see, <laughs> really good reliability on uh, your capacitance. So, yeah, I wasn't too thrilled about that. So I was like, yeah, we'll get rid of this ancient stuff. It used to be, as I said, mounted right here. And it would poke through those four holes. You know, those would. I was like, well, we're going to go an air cap. So, figured out where I needed to mount it. Need a couple standoffs. I don't like standoffs on variable capacitors, but... She's close. Custom cut my own shaft. Cut the first one, it was too short, so I had to cut another one off of this. So we got that shaft on there. She's happy. But, uh, <clears throat> the air cap. Excuse me. Right here. This is a beast. This is one hell of an air cap. It was bound up tight, so I had to uh, figure out how to get it to work again. It's tight by hand, but not when you put a knob on it. It's tight by hand because these plates weigh so much, if you loosen up the drag, the cap would just fall back. But you know, when you put a tuning knob on it, you know, everything turns beautifully. But, uh, back here you can see there was like a clutch. And it was all wore out. So when you did get it to turn with two hands on it, you'd hear it go... I was like, wow! Which, these were the little plates for the clutch. And they're all wore out. They weren't even straight on it. So I designed it so you don't need to clutch using a little bit more modern technology. So we got that sucker knocked out of the park. But that's that's one hell of tuning cap right there. So we'll set this in here about where she'll 
Live. Okay. Then on to the uh, roller inductor. That I had to modify. This gear here is, you can see it right there, a wire that goes through it and through a hole in the shaft which holds that gear in place. Well, somebody tried prying it off and they had the wire bent way down in here. So you can see where it was binding on this gear. You know, random places on the gear. So when you try to turn the roll inductor, you get this, and then you had to really reef it and it clunk. So uh, now, it's nice and quiet and happy. This wouldn't go up to six meter. So I extended the range of this by adding one more coil to the null side of it, which extends the length of the air inductor because it would get close, then you'd hit the stop. So I added another round, which should pull me one round back, should be no problem. And that lives roughly there. So, yeah, don't look too bad. I'm just hoping I don't get a little bit of capacitance between these two, the input and the output cap. I'm sure I will, but I can, I can pretty much take care of that. Because down here you see two holes. I could build a plate, you know, to shield them, you know, and then I could also come up off this side and shield this from the input inductor, or from the main inductor. Somebody disconnected the um, balum, long wire balum, so I got to figure that all out. Luckily I got the schematic so I can try to put it back to the way it belongs. But uh sure could I do a quick update on my project for this weekend. But uh got a little work ahead of me yet. I just got this sucker mounted. So that should work out beautiful. Instead of fixed income Capacitance. I now have total variable capability. So that will also extend the range of the tuner instead of just these four fixed capacitors. So I guess in theory it's supposed to work, but we all know about theory, it's just the theory. When I get it all wired up, put it to the real world test. You know, and then we'll get rid of these stupid incandescent bulbs put some LEDs on here I gotta go through and reset the power meters and stuff because the second they detect RF and turn on they just clink peg right out you know so I gotta go through a complete alignment on that but uh you see can say I guess it's all here. It's just, I gotta really rack my brain to figure out how to uh, make up for all the screw ups that were done and uh, come up with new ways of doing things that are reliable, not just hackery. This is kind of hackery, it looks good here. But we know it ain't right, because it was supposed to be this. But I consider it an upgrade. So, eh, we're good with that. Alright there, people. You have yourself a fine one. Take care. And uh, maybe in the next video, we will be testing the beast.
We'll see if we can blow up a radio or tune some pretty bad matches. Catch y'all later. See you on Facebook. See you in my next YouTube video.